Alleluia. Christ comes and gives us new life. May you know the presence of God's love in your life this day as we celebrate the knowledge that God walks with us every step of our trouble, every step of the way, every time we have fear. Welcome to our worship from Grace Lutheran Church, Hastings, Michigan. We're glad you can come and join us. On a big announcement to share with you as we get ready to worship. At 1045, we will be having some wonderful streams and some wonderful people present. So if you're watching this and then you get wind of it, you're welcome to come and join us early. Also at 1045, for the first time in a long time, we will have a nursery attendant. We are so thankful that we have been able to hire Aurora Collins. Come and welcome her. All children are welcome indeed. Advent is in two weeks. Can you believe it? Come and join the fun. It will be a great time. God's Creation 2023 calendars are available. They're $5 each. It's really to pay for the cost of the calendars and those we end up giving away for the Christmas baskets. We hope that you can enjoy worship this time. Let us continue by contemplating the wonderful love of God's presence in our life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another and all will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. My young friends, I stand by the leaves as they are mostly down. In fact, I stand by this one intentionally this week because next week it will be down. It will be gone. We will have a whole nother aspect of our decoration up. It will look very different for it was Christ the King next week. But I want to focus on that which passes away. Everything passes away. Jesus promises that. But that doesn't keep the love of God from coming and being a part of us. The love of God is here, even maybe with all of the suffering. But many times, there are times that we don't suffer at all. And we just live life knowing God's love. It's a gift to share with you that we are able to know God's love every day, that it never leaves us, 
that God continues to come and celebrate with us and give us new life. May we all know this. Let us pray. Dear God, help us always to know your love because it is always there for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming. See you next week. Grace, mercy, peace be to you from God who gives us the strength to endure every hardship. Amen. At this time of year, with Halloween, the decay of leaves, and the cold weather, Today's gospel is perfect with its end of times theme, which fascinate, confuse, and rebuff many of us. Almost everyone who came to worship today has encountered some form of the end of time story in your life, personally, especially with all the apocalyptic movies, shows, and musicals available for us for consumption. The end times may be one of those themes most enthralling to anyone, especially those who are imaginations are sparked by it. I remember teaching a confirmation class once at Zion Lutheran Church and asking the students to write a belief statement. One of them, whom I thought was more engaged than others, blurted out, I believe in the zombie apocalypse! Oh, Kelly. I love Kelly. I miss Kelly. The theme fascinates all generations since it also has to do with our finalitude, just as much as it also rebuffs many people. Ask yourself, my friends, what is most nagging for you when you hear Jesus speak about these end time events? When Jesus says, when you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place. But the end will not follow immediately. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. As you think about your own faith journey, my friends in Christ. I ask you to reflect on that journey in light of being people of God, that you are part of the faith community here at Grace Lutheran Church, as we also belong to the communities of Hastings, Delton, Middleville, Woodland, and many others. What are the persistent and sometimes unanswerable questions that arise in these verses of the destruction of the temple, of war and insurrection, of families being divided, and of persecution. What aspect of the text grabs your attention? Upon what verses are your questions focused? Today we hear Jesus actually redirecting the question of the disciples. Jesus prophesied that the temple, which in Luke's gospel is a great place, it will be destroyed. Luke, of course, knows it will be destroyed since he is writing post its actual destruction. Jesus notes that in the course of history, in the course of God's history with us children, something that has been good will be no longer. The temple that has served as a reference for faith will vanish away stone from stone. But the disciples want to know more, and so they seek to understand what will be the sign that this is about to take place. And even though the disciples ask for signs and explanations, Jesus redirects the disciples' question. Jesus shifts the focus from signs and explanations to the disciples' own journey of faith in the midst of this world and all its upheavals and distractions, its divisions and its conquests. Jesus diverts attention from the apocalyptic phenomena that tend to fascinate us 
as disciples. Jesus warns by saying, Beware that you are not led astray by a useless, empty, and simplistic equating of current events with the end times. There will be wars. There will be insurrections. There will be earthquakes. It's part of our lives. But these are not to terrify you or to render you inactive. But before all these occur, you will be persecuted. Here, my friends, is the crux, the turning point, as Jesus now speaks about faith, the faith of the disciples, the faith of our community, gathered here for worship. Here is our gaze completely given to God. But so, I wonder though, where is your gaze directed? Is your gaze directed toward the end times, toward signs and potents? Is our gaze directed towards a way from the world around us instead of loving it and caring for it? Does Jesus direct us to fear reparations, getting even, and getting a payback? No. On the contrary, Jesus points to faith, to the disciples' faith that testifies to a life different from the values of the world. It is that faith and that community of faith, us who will be persecuted. We will be persecuted. But it also is a way of us to know that even though we're shunned and hated, God and the wisdom God imparts will guide our community of faith we have here at Grace Lutheran Church. We are called to have a community of faith, not a community of fear in these end of times. The wisdom of God's way, as described in Isaiah 65, is a way of delight and not of weeping, a way of abundance and not scarcity, a way of peace that puts an end to all violence. And as we read in our reading of Malachi, we find from this reading wisdom as a way of healing in its wings. The arrogant, those who think they know the signs and expectations, will stumble and fall, my friends. And if that wasn't enough, Paul in 2 Thessalonians gives us an example of doing what is right. The wisdom of faith means never being weary to do what is right. That is, we are never to tire of working for the way of abundance and peace that God has promised. Dear siblings in Christ, it is crucial for us to name the reality of divisions and suffering that separate us so that healing and wholeness may come our way. One of the things we still face in the United States, for example, is the trauma of racism, which continues to set people against people. But in our process of being people of God, my friends, let us be sure to identify a way forward by naming the wisdom of faith already present in our lives, which is life-affirming and a building. Faith, my friends, is not to fear the world and its wars. Instead, faith is truly being aware of the many divisions, the sufferings and the injustices that we face here and now, as faith traces a way through those injustices, divisions, suffering, and divisions. Faith allows us to have a way of peace and joy, singing a new song that the presence of God who comes and gives new life may be honored and glorified on this day. Let us have complete trust in God, who comes to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
like so. Just that. 